Okay, we're going to take a look at set notation in this um, video. So this is just a very formal way of writing out um, some of our probabilities. So the first thing we need to know is what the sample space is. And, and we have looked at the sample space before. We sometimes call that the universal set. And it can be represented by any one of these four symbols. So the first two are Greek letters. That's the Greek letter omega. And this is the Greek letter she. And then that's an S and a U. Okay, so for example, if the universal set was all positive integers, Remember, integer just means whole number. Up to and including 20, we could write something like this. So I'll, I'll pick one of these symbols. I'll pick the she. Okay, so the universal set, all positive integers up to 20. So that's just basically going to be all the whole numbers from 1 to 20. Okay, and the next thing we can have is a subset of the universal set. So we say A, for example, is a subset of the universal set. Um, if all of the elements, and an element is just one of the, the numbers in this case, so 18 is, a number, is an element. Um, if all the elements in A are in the universal set. So for example, we could say A is all of the multiples of 3 under 20. So let's just write out what A is. And we always write in curly brackets like this. So A is all the multiples of 3 under 20. So 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and 18. Now because all of the elements in A are also in the universal set, that means A is a subset of the universal set. Next thing, which we already know, is that A with a dash on top is the complement of A. So remember, last, last lesson we looked at Venn diagrams. So if we were talking about A, we'd be talking about everything in that, that whole circle representing A. But if we were talking about everything that was not A, we'd basically be talking about everything outside of that circle. So for example, we said A was all the multiples of 3 under 20, so not A is just going to be all of everything that's not a multiple of 3 under 20. So it's going to be 1, 2, 4, 5, uh, 7, 8, 10, 11, 13, 14, 16, 17, 19, and 20. Okay, so A is basically whatever, sorry, A with the, the dash on top, the complement of A is whatever A is not. Okay, this just means that this symbol here means is an element of A. So this means six is an element of A. So you can see six is included in, in our sample space for A. And if you have a, a small letter N with, with A in brackets, that means uh, N is the cardinal number of A. Basically, it says how many elements are in A. So for example, in our example, so for our example here, we had A, we have one, two, three, four, five, six elements in A, so this would be equal to six. Now, two things we've looked at before quite a bit are uh, our two symbols here. So this one, remember, means and, and this is meaning or. And if we take a look at a Venn diagram, this basically would be the intersection, we call that the intersection of A and B. So it's basically all the elements that are in both A and B. Whereas this means anything that's in A or B, and we call this the union of A and B. Uh, and that's anything that, yeah, that could be in A or B. Okay. Let's take a look at how we might apply this to a question. So, um, yeah, let's just look at the example. A number is chosen from the set of positive integers from 1 to 10 inclusive. So basically, that's telling us what our universal set is. So we can fill that in here. So the universal set is 1, 2, 3. Now, in maths, you can use three dots to mean everything in between all the way up to 10. OK, so just so because I don't want to write out all the numbers from 1 to 10, those three dots tell me that I'm going from 3 all the way to 10, including each of those numbers. OK, now in purple here, it says A is the set of odd numbers from 1 to 10 inclusive. So A is all the odd numbers, 1, 3, 5, 7 and 9. And B is the set of prime numbers from 1 to 10 inclusive. So B is 2, 3, 5 and 7. OK, now let's take a look at how we might put these numbers into a Venn diagram. So 
my two subsets are A and B. And the first thing I want to do is I want to see how many of the numbers are in both A and B. Okay, so let's look. Three. So basically we're looking at what, what numbers are odd and prime. So three is in both A and B. Five is in both A and B. And seven is in both A and B. Now what's left over in A? So what was in A but not in B? So we had one and nine. So those two numbers can go in here. And let's look at what was left over in B. Well, in B, we didn't have the number two, okay? Um, what goes outside is everything else. So what numbers were not in either A or B? So uh, we had one, two, three. So number four isn't in there. Number six, number eight, and number 10. So those go outside of the two circles in the Venn diagram. Okay. First uh, question is saying, what is uh, what are in A and B? So which numbers are in both A and B? So that is our numbers in the center there, 3, 5, and 7. And this means which ones are in either A or B. So either A or B is all of the numbers in the circles. So let's try and put them in an order. 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, and 9 not A, so which numbers are not in A? So A was 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, so not A would be then the even numbers. This is asking how many elements are in A, so we've got five, five odd numbers, and this is what is in only B, so in only B is just the number two here. Last thing we're going to do is just going to calculate some probability. So we need to remember we're thinking now about how many numbers are in each category. So what's the probability of getting A? So A, remember, was just the odd numbers, and there was five odd numbers out of ten total because our universal set was the numbers one to ten. That's ten numbers. So the probability of getting A is a half. This says what's the probability of getting either A, sorry, what's the probability of getting A or B. So in A or B, we have one, two, three, four, five, six numbers. So the probability is six out of ten, or three fifths. This one now is asking what's the probability of getting A and B? So that is the intersection here. So the probability of getting A and B is three out of ten. Okay, so that's how we can use our, our Venn diagrams to, to calculate probabilities and some, some proper set notation.